Hi, I'm Kelly, and as promised, today I'll show you how to paint a nose. I've also had requests for how to mix skin tones, so I'll be working on a pretty big chunk of a face. This person is famous, and hopefully you'll recognize who I'm painting by the end of the video. So let's get going. I'm wetting down his entire face with a big three-quarter inch wide flat brush. Your brush you use doesn't necessarily have to be flat, just big. When mixing a light skin tone, beginners will often want to use a watered down brown, which seems logical, but I think if you use a mixture of orange and purple and maybe a little yellow, you'll get a more realistic light skin tone. This is the most exciting part of any portrait I do, but it's also the most stressful. I love watching those colors explode onto the wet surface. As you can see, I'm staying away from highlighted areas such as the bridge of the nose and the top of the cheekbone. I've also masked off a few spots that I want to protect and keep totally white. Nostrils, if you can see them, are not circular. They're shaped like teardrops or commas, and most of the time they're not pitch black. For darker areas, I use a deeper concentration of paint. It's less watered down, and there's more purple and less orange. I tried to limit my palette here to just a few colors. I'm establishing the curve and the shadows around the nose. This nose is in profile and is facing the light, so I'm not outlining it or adding color there. He's got some wrinkles that are just permanently there. I'm using a watery coffee color to sketch them in and then I'll be cleaning off my palette. Now I'm adding a little orange paint along the edge of the wrinkles and underneath the nose. The palette has some bluish stains on it that don't affect my mixing. I should get a new palette, but I'm so attached to this one. That white shape near the top will make sense eventually. Next I have kind of a fast cheekbone shadow, and then I'm darkening the top lip just a bit. Now I'm just adding more light washes of color and keeping everything really soft. This person is often pretty pale, so I don't want to go overboard here. I'll eventually do a dark skin tutorial. It's so much more fun than light skin, I've got to say. One reason why I chose to paint this person is because he has stubble. The brush I'm using is old and very fuzzy. I use it to dust tiny amounts of paint over the surface of the skin, just barely touching the paper. This technique is called dry brush, and it creates a texture that resembles stubble. I've also darken the nostril again. Adding just a touch of cadet blue to the underside of the nose, I like the way it works with the orange. They're complementary colors. Men's lips have color, but it's more of a skin tone with maybe a little pink. You never want to outline them, especially the bottom lip. You can see how much work stubble is, and I really wish he'd just shave every once in a while. Unfortunately, my camera isn't catching the bottom half inch of the painting, but rest assured that there's a lot more stubble down there too. And here's some more orange. Older people are easier to paint than babies. Babies have no wrinkles, so if I want to make their skin darker, I have to wet the face down completely before I can add more paint. Otherwise, edges from new layers of paint will develop, 
and a more weathered face like this can handle those edges. So if you're a beginner, try painting someone with some character in their skin first. He's got a couple of freckles you can see here. He also has some more under his eyes, but they're sort of lost in the glare of this picture. Now I'm drawing in the thing that makes this person look like who he is. Sorry about the time jump. I'm going to go over this area a few more times. He's wearing some taupe colored sunglasses, so that affects everything I paint underneath them. They all have this kind of brownish quality. The bluer shapes on the left are defining part of the bridge of his nose. The background colors are defining his profile as well. There's something oddly futuristic about the shape of his nose. I'd like to see someone create a concept car based on it. And this is the kind of insane stuff you think about when you paint people as often as I do. I'm adding some more shadows around the eyes. The reference photo I used for this was small and it was either taken by a fan or the paparazzi about two and a half years ago. I'm only using a section of it. Most people don't know that I have a side job where I create cartoons of this man and the rest of his band. I have painted him literally hundreds of times and a lot of the paintings are realistic watercolors like this one. He's kind of like my Charlie Brown. In case you haven't guessed yet, this is Bono from U2. You can check out my U2 work at a site called at U2 and I've linked to it below. Bono has said that if he wants to be anonymous in public, he takes off his sunglasses, but his nose is usually the thing that tips people off. Finally, I'm adding a light wash of yellow over the skin. This is a subtle step that warms his skin up just a bit. And here's the finished painting. Thank you for watching.